Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tesla Motors second quarter 2010 earnings call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session, and instructions will follow at that time. If anyone should require assistance during the program, please press star, then zero on your touchtone telephone. As a reminder, this program is being recorded. I would now like to introduce your host for today's program, Mr. Ricardo Reyes, Vice President of Communications. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. Welcome to Tesla Motors' earnings call for the second quarter of 2010. With me on the call today are Elon Musk, Chairman, Product Architect, and CEO of Tesla Motors, and Deepak Ahuja, our Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin the call, please allow me to read the following statement to inform you of certain safe harbor provisions under the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. During the course of this conference call, we will discuss our business outlook and make other forward-looking statements within the meaning of the safe harbor provisions of the Private Securities Litigation Act Reform Act of 1995. Such statements are only predictions based on management's current expectations. Actual events or results could differ materially from those predictions due to a number of risks and uncertainties, including those discussed in the risk factors section of our financial prospectus relating to our initial public offering filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission and as amended on June 29, 2010. In addition, any forward-looking statements represent our views only as of today and should not be re relied upon as representing our views as of any subsequent date. While we may elect to update these forward-looking statements at some point in the future, we specifically disclaim any obligation to do so, even if our views change. Therefore, you should not rely on these forward-looking statements as representing our views as of any date subsequent to today. With that, I'll turn it over to Elon Musk. All right. Thanks, Mr. Ricardo. Um, I think uh, financially there's uh, you know, not, not much um, news uh, in that, uh, obviously, we just completed our IPO uh, in, in late, um, late June, so, um, and it's, it's only like six weeks later. So uh, there's not a lot new there, um, but uh, I will go over the uh, progress made in second quarter as well as some, uh, some recent progress um, and uh, touch on uh, the uh, all aspects of the business, roads to model as powertrain, uh, expansion of our business with Daimler, the strategic partnership with Toyota, and uh, the new me Fremont factory that we've acquired. Um, so as far as roast is concerned, um, I think a very solid performance there. Uh, we delivered 141 roasters, best quarter for new orders uh, since uh, Q3 2008, essentially before the uh, start of the recession. Um, and uh, and uh, this is, uh, I think, yeah, just overall a good, a good sign for us to be uh, having coming such a, a good quarter for Roadster. Um, the uh, the first sales occurred in Japan, uh, Hong Kong, and Canada. We're now in 28 countries, um, and we're going to uh, start to increasing our activity in, in Asia uh, through the balance of this year. Um, it, we're essentially uh, laying the groundwork um, for the Model S uh, to come. So, uh, it, um, with, with each of these countries, it can often take six months, sometimes a year to work through the regulatory requirements, uh, get established, get a location, hire the key personnel. Um, and, uh, and so I think we're, we're really um, laying the groundwork very well for uh, future sales of the Model S. Um, we obviously announced the Roadster 2.5, um, which is our, our fourth iteration in two years on the Roadster. Uh, it had features uh, upgraded interior, um, new, new styling, improved nav system, and a number of other features. Um, we have the Tug Heuer Odyssey of Pioneers, which is showcasing the Roadster um, in a, in a uh, the first round-the-world trip of a production electric car, and that's charging from existing locations all around the world. So it's just charging off the grid everywhere from uh, Switzerland to Siberia and uh, with, with no additional infrastructure uh, required. Um, on the just a little more on the retail expansion. Obviously, we, we hired uh, George Blankenship, who, who spent uh, a couple of decades at, uh, at Gap and then uh, was uh, the, the key, key guy for the first six years of the Apple Store activity. Um, we opened new stores in Copenhagen, Newport Beach, and Zurich. Uh, to find leases for stores in Tokyo, Paris, and Milan, which are expected to open in the uh, later this year. Um, as far as Model S, uh, we're on plan for a mid-2012 launch, um, and that's uh, starting with a slow wrap of production 
in, in mid-2012, and then uh, getting to a 20,000 uh, unit annualized rate in 2013, uh, as described in the uh, IPO roadshow. Um, we've, uh, we're growing our resources in R&D and manufacturing uh, considerably. We added uh, about 90 people, which is a growth of 25% from the prior quarter. Um, our, our recruiting teams are also building, uh, our, our ability to recruit is also building uh, very well. Uh, that's headed by Arnon Gashuri, uh, head of uh, human resources and talent acquisition. Uh, he was the guy who, who ran the, built up the talent acquisition and ran it at Google when they went from 2,000 to about 20,000 people. Um, and I don't think really any uh, company has added as many good people in as short a time as, as Google did uh, under Arnon. So I think we've got a great guy leading that effort. Um, and of course, we announced the purchase of the uh, Fremont uh, Manufacturing Facility, uh, otherwise known as uh, NUMI, formerly known as NUMI. Okay. Uh, our manufacturing team is actually on site uh, at NUMI right now, so um, they're uh, uh, planning the uh, layout and installation of equipment. I think, for, uh, although officially the uh, uh, NUMI facility transfers to Tesla on October 1st. Uh, it, is, it is on a de facto basis. Uh, it, it is ours today. Um, we're also looking at buying some additional equipment uh, uh, from the uh, NUMI facility, so some of the equipment that was used to produce the uh, Corolla and Tacoma vehicles um, at uh, ex exceptionally good prices. There's really I think never been a better time to, to buy uh, automotive manufacturing equipment. Our, our main hydraulic press, uh, which is which will be used to stamp the body panels for the Model S, uh, is being uh, disassembled. It's currently in Michigan. It's being dis disassembled for shipment to Fremont. So we expect to start installing that uh, later this year and have our stamping line up and running um, next year. That's one of the key manufacturing milestones for, um, for next year, uh, along with uh, activation of the paint facility. Um, we've made a, a huge amount of progress in design and engineering of Model S. Uh, we've finalized uh, the uh, 3D CAD package, so the, the body and chassis uh, has been developed and, re and uh, refined to within a few millimeters, and all of that uh, data has been released. So that, that actually took place uh, late Saturday night. Uh, the team um, uh, finalized and released uh, all the all the all the stamping all, all the uh, panel dimensions for stamping. So, uh, in, in general, uh, supplier sourcing remains on track to our internal plan for the Model S. Um, I, I think it's probably fair to say that, but certainly in my opinion, um, there are no uh, no elements of the Model S that that play sub mid 2012 production date in jeopardy. Um, we've sourced uh, most of our major components already, so as we know both what the unit cost is and what the uh, uh, tooling, uh, engineering, development, and so forth is related to those, um, which, which helps uh, bracket uh, our both our um, R&D and tooling expense as well as our unit cost of the vehicle. Um, and we're at about the roughly 80% 80, 80 level there. Um, so we've sourced some of the key major components that, that were the, the most questionable, such as the 17-inch touchscreen, the instrument panel, seating, um, mechanical restraints and airbags, lighting systems, suspension, brakes, uh, battery cells, HVAC, wheels, tires, brakes, et cetera. So, um, in terms of OEM relationships, the Daimler relationship is, is going, going well. It's, it's expanding in its uh, scope. Um, it's worth noting that Daimler did not sell any of their stake in the IPO, um, and they had somewhere in the order of a, a three extra returns. So they, they, could have, um, they could have recouped all of their additional cash and still had a two extra return sitting on, uh, in the Tesla stock, and they've they obviously chosen to sell nothing. Um, we delivered a record amount of battery packs and charges for the Smart in Q2, um, and we also signed the agreement to uh, develop uh, a battery pack and charger for the Mercedes A-Class. 
Uh, NAC development is on track for completion later this year, uh, and we expect to begin delivery of battery packs and charges um, in 2011 for the, for the A class. Um, on the Toyota front, uh, Toyota invested $50 million at the IPO price, uh, which gave them about a 3% ownership. Um, and we signed the agreement to uh, do the electric grab four. Um, and that, that development will take place um, this year and, and next with uh, uh, prototypes. Uh, prototypes have already been delivered to Toyota. Um, and um, we expect to start uh, delivering those to customers probably in the 2012 time frame. Uh, and um, that, that's going, I think, very well. We're pretty excited about that, that vehicle. I mean, essentially, it's sort of like the resurrection of the RAV4, um, except it's just going to be way better than, than the electric RAV4 that, that was temporarily out several years ago. Um, so in, in terms of just looking ahead, I mean, what Tesla's doing is we're just sort of heads down focused on execution of the business plan. Um, uh, obviously, given our level of growth, quarterly profitability is not as meaningful. I mean, we're essentially going um, from you know, five or 600 vehicles a year to 20,000 vehicles a year um, with, the, with the Model S. Uh, and um, you know, spending roughly half a billion dollars in uh, development and tooling and whatnot um, over the course of 10 or 12 quarters. So that's you know, an average expenditure of, of roughly 40 or 50 million dollars. So, so obviously it's not profitable to, it's not, it's not really possible to, to stay profitable with, with that level of growth. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, is, it is worth noting, and people will talk a little bit more about this, that um, if, if we were to stay at our, approximately our current level of, um, if, we were to, if we were just to create a business which was the road to, and selling concrete components, um, you know, we'd, we'd have a, a profitable enterprise, um, but, um, but we're giving, that, giving up that, that possibility in order to achieve uh, what is pretty astronomical growth. So, um, for the remainder of 2010, uh, I think the, the, the biggest milestone is really completion of the, uh, the Alpha uh, version of the vehicle. Um, the Alpha version of the vehicle is uh, roughly 80 to 90 percent um, production uh, intense, so it's very close to, to, to a production vehicle. Um, we expect to have that completed uh, towards the end of this year, um, and uh, to be essentially complete, perhaps 98, 98, 98 to 99 percent complete in terms of, of sourcing of components for the vehicle. So if we're roughly the, the 80 percent completion level right now for, for sourcing of, of components for the models, we expect to be at the you know, 98, 99 percent level by the end of the year. Um, and have an operating uh, alpha prototype. So that's, that's really the, the key focus, and with that, I'll turn it over to, to Deepak. Thank you, Ilan. Um, I want to just welcome the new investors to the company first, um, and then since this is our first earnings call, I want to start by providing a brief overview of the financial profile of Tesla. We'll then go over the quarterly results and um, finish up with a discussion of our DOE funding mechanism and some thoughts on our full year financial guidance. We believe that our activities over the past few years have laid a solid foundation for us to successfully launch the Model S in 2012. We've now delivered over 12